This is the story about how I became a software engineer in under one year. But to really understand my journey, we're gonna have to go back a few years to 2016. I've always had a general interest in tech ever since I was young, but it was in 2016 where I got my first taste of code. During my university years, after doing some code in the class, me and some friends decided that we wanted to learn Python and eventually pivot into tech. We signed up on a course on Udemy and we got cracking. We used to meet up on the evenings, go through assignments together and help each other wherever we could. We even made a group chat where we would motivate one another. But that obviously didn't work out. One of the main reasons was, well, because of the sunk cost fallacy. I felt like I had already put in so much time and effort in my studies, it didn't make any sense at the time to jump ship. So I stuck with what I was doing and fast forward to November 2019, as I was applying for engineering roles, my 19 year old brother moves in with me. At the time, he was interested in code and he was using his spare time to self-teach code and more specifically Python. It reminded me of myself not too long ago. Anyway, it's now the turn of the year and it's March 2020 and COVID hits and it hits hard. Most of the companies that I'm applying for stopped recruiting and when the world was locked down, Anas and I got very close. We talked about life, how we perceived it and what our goals and dreams were. Then we were hit with devastating news. Anas, at the age of 19, was diagnosed with cancer, specifically, osteosarcoma. During that time I worked unremarkable jobs whilst applying for engineering roles but I hadn't up to that point done anything to really start a career for myself. I hadn't really done anything to upskill or extend my capabilities and that really bothered me. In reality I was disappointed with myself. I know that my self-worth isn't attached to my occupation or what I do but I knew that I had talent and I wasn't utilizing it correctly. To quote the famous Chinedu Ekidesi, what on earth is wrong with me? I'm sure I have talent, but where my talent is leading me. The final trigger, or the thing that pushed me over the edge, was a conversation that I had with Anas, where he made me promise him that I'd make something of myself and that he would leave his sister in my hands. It was one of the last things he ever said to me, and those were some of the heaviest words I'd ever heard, and they will stick with me for the rest of my life. It lit a fire in me, a fire that I'd never had before. And it opened my eyes to something I was well aware of, but his words helped me perceive it much better. My family deserved so much more from me. So back to this tech thing I go, I already had an affinity for it and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to kickstart my career and change my life. So I did some research and found this Reddit post. How someone earning $14 an hour pivoted to tech and had a 70k salary in next to no time. So I thought, yeah, that's me. I'm on 70k in a few months. And I thought, let's start with it. Let's try my hand at cloud computing. I started by purchasing the Ultima AWS Certified Solutions Architect Association course and learned about AWS service, how to make users and how to run EC2s if I remember correctly. I started tweeting about it and tried to connect with people but no one wants to engage with someone with seven followers. Most of my early tweets wouldn't even get a sniff. At that time, Anas's condition worsened. I was making constant trips to the hospital, doing night shifts to stay with him and helping out wherever I could. The doctors then saw it fit that he would see his remaining days at home. Anas passed away on the 7th of July, 2021. We buried him the next day on the 8th of July and his funeral prayer was packed to the brim. In the car back from the funeral, all I could think about were the words that Anas imparted to me. And it was in that moment, in that car, that I made my conviction that I would become a software engineer or die trying. So help me God. After taking some time out and then going back to my AWS course, I realized this wasn't what I wanted to do. The main reason why I was drawn to tech was because of code. I want to code. So on the 12th of August 2021, I decided that I wanted to make the shift and learn JavaScript. And as you can see clear in this tweet, we are starting from scratch, but we are keeping it going. Next up was Jonas Schmetman's JavaScript course. And I'm going to be completely honest, at the beginning, I found the course really difficult. I learned what variables, functions, arrays, objects were, but it took me ages. Was it because I forgot how to study? Was it because of a lack of confidence? I don't know, whatever the reason was, I was moving at a snail's pace. At that point, I started to realize JavaScript wasn't enough. Jonas kept mentioning HTML and CSS and I thought at the time, man, I'm gonna have to learn HTML and CSS before I go any further. So, on to HTML and CSS I go. <laughs> I used FreeCodeCamp and W3Schools to get me through the basics. And as you can tell so far, I was all over the place. The problem with self-learning is the amount of pivoting you end up doing at the beginning, trying to figure it all out. You're either doing something in the wrong order 
or you've gone down a rabbit hole doing something you never expected to be doing. Also, you don't realize you don't need to know or memorize everything. As long as you understand coding concepts, everything else is a Google away. I know this guy, don't ask who, just an idiot. He tried to memorize hex codes for like three days and then realized that he didn't need to memorize them. Idiot, right? <laughs> After trying to code where I could, losing motivation, coding haphazardly, I was scrolling through Twitter and I came across this full stack coding bootcamp that was currently accepting applications. The best part, it was completely free. I was struggling to learn by myself and it wasn't a lack of anything on my side, rather it was the lack of guidance. And the bootcamp provided exactly that guidance. The issue though, however, it was a huge risk. My family depends on me and for me to quit my job to go to a full-time coding bootcamp would be putting an insane amount of pressure on my family. My family came together and told me that they believed that the risk was worth it and that they were supportive of me and I can't thank them enough for it. The application process was rigorous but nothing too technical that a newbie couldn't do just a lot that needed to be done. And thankfully, once I was accepted, I decided to slow down because I felt like my foundations were pretty strong and I decided to take it easy before I fully immersed myself in the bootcamp. And then it started. We brushed through HTML and CSS in like a day, I kid you not. We immediately moved on to JavaScript. We covered variables, we covered arrays, we covered objects, we covered functions, all by the end of the week. Deep it. Everything I learned in six weeks, we covered in five days. They were not joking when they said that this would be the toughest learning experience of my entire life. Next, we moved on to DOM manipulation and by the end of the week, I had my first project, a simple Pokedex. Afterwards, we moved on to the backend, we learned about Node.js, then we moved on to React and the first eight weeks went by like a blur. In the ninth week, we did a group project where we were tasked with making something that would help other boot campers. Then the next three weeks, we covered some really important things like test-driven development, continuous integration and continuous deployment, agile methodologies, and we even touched on TypeScript as well. The last four weeks of the 16-week intensive bootcamp, we spent on making another group project, but this time we had more time and more knowledge. Our brief this time, make whatever you want. We made an application to help teachers monitor and analyze their students' reading. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you and say the whole thing was smooth sailing, it's far from the case. I struggled with concepts and a lot of them didn't come naturally to me. Sometimes I'd be in the Zoom room and I'd hear people answering questions correctly and I'd be like, what? It's like if the question was, what's one plus one? And in your head, you're thinking, oh, that's quite easy. That's obviously two. And someone answers the question with Alan Iverson. And you're thinking, well, that certainly can't be right. And the lecturer goes, spot on. And you're like, huh? But I stuck with it. And I spent my evenings going over what we did during the day. And by the end of the night, I'd usually be like, huh, damn. One plus one really does equal Alan Iverson. But the next morning, the confusion was there all over again. But I kept with it. I stuck with it. I read articles. I watched YouTube videos. I made little projects to bridge the gap in my understanding. And one morning, I woke up and I was ahead of the game. And I stayed ahead of the game from there on out. Demo day arrives and it's the last day of the coding bootcamp. And we have to present our four week projects to potential employees who are watching. And the team and I hit it out of the park. I have to admit, by my own admission, I believe we were the best of the bunch there. I'm just saying. I left Demo Day with so much confidence. I was sure that one of the employers was going to snatch me up any day now. And that day just didn't come. Lesson number one, there is value in failure. I applied for roles provided by my bootcamp and other roles outside of it and no one would give me a chance. Not in March, not in April. After nearly two months, not a single role that I'd applied for had given me an interview. Many others from my cohort had already received offers and some of them had already started their jobs. And I didn't understand why I wasn't getting a chance. I was a competent coder and I loved to work in teams. I had so many questions swirling in my head. What am I missing? Am I too big of a risk to take a gamble on? Or am I just not good enough? So I came to a crossroad where one road I self-destruct, let this hamper my confidence and be riddled with imposter syndrome or do some real introspection and find out what I'm doing wrong and get it fixed. I chose to do the latter. I started by hanging this up and I would look at it every single day to remind me what my goal was. I reached out and spoke to so many different people, getting advice and asking them to check my CV wherever I could. I attended tech conferences and spoke to so many different people in the industry and asking advice from anyone who'd lend me an ear. I attended hackathons, I was grinding lead code, I was doing whatever I could to increase my employability. I was starting to see some success, but I failed a couple of interviews. It's also when I made my rejection video. Lesson number two. Prepare like it's the only chance you'll ever get. For the first time I got an interview at a place I really wanted to work, 
it was a tech consultancy firm and I liked the project they had going on and I felt like I could really thrive there. But they did something that threw me off completely. They provided me with the interview questions prior to the interview. There was no tech test, no nothing. It was a one and done interview and I had the interview questions at hand. I prepared for the questions half-heartedly, I'd say more than half-heartedly, but three-quarter heartedly, you know what I'm getting at. And I naively thought at the time, I'm just gonna use my charm and enthusiasm to win them over. Them other suckers don't stand a chance off, of course, I'm just joking. It was a Zoom interview and I thought I did okay, I'm an extrovert and I feed off other people's energy, but you lose a lot of dimensions when you're doing anything over Zoom and I just couldn't tell how I did. After two weeks of an agonizing wait for a job I really wanted, I was hit with rejection. I like to think that generally I'm quite a positive person and things just brush off me like water off a duck's back. I had to take a seat and really process the rejection because I wanted this job. So guess what I did? I kid you not, I watched my own video on rejection. Can you imagine my past self giving advice to my current self? That image in itself cheered me up pretty much straight away. But now I can't be a hypocrite. I have to practice what I preach. So I thought back to the interview and reviewed the whole thing in my head. And I came to the conclusion that I relied far too heavily on my charm and enthusiasm rather than well-prepared questions. I also spoke to the recruiter to ask the company for feedback on my interview and they obliged and it was exactly what I thought. We liked your enthusiasm, but sometimes that led you to veer away from answering the questions. Although we could see you had good technical knowledge, some of the technical answers weren't clear and needed some prompting to understand what you did. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. tough pill to swallow, but the truth nonetheless. The reality was I stunk up the interview, lesson learned. Back to the drawing board and I was applying for loads of roles each day, grinding through leak code and code walls. And I was getting through to loads of second stages doing telephone interviews and tech tests. And I was able to line up four interviews in one week. Lesson number three, when it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And I'm working as hard as I can. I've got question banks and tailored answers to each company and role. I'm doing deep research. I'm role playing interviews. I'm doing whatever I can and my appendix bursts. Yup, I went into the emergency department with some pain and I required urgent surgery. I spent the rest of that week in hospital. I was in constant contact with all the companies that I had interviews with to try and delay it for as long as possible, postpone it. But by the end of the week, none of the companies could postpone any longer. And why would they? All they need are candidates suitable for the role. They don't need to interview me. And on Friday afternoon, when I realized that I had no interviews lined up whatsoever, I laughed. The whole hospital ward must have thought I was crazy because I was laughing from my belly. Most of you are probably wondering, why are you laughing? I did everything to position myself as the best possible candidate. I changed my CV multiple times. I attended tech conferences. I attended workshops. I learned from previous mistakes and prepared for the interview as well as I could. And at the beginning of the week that I had my interviews lined up, I get hospitalized for the first time in my entire life. You couldn't write a better drama. And who gets appendicitis at 29? I only heard it in kids. I also laugh because as a Muslim, it was clear that a higher power was at play here and God had something else in store for me. And this is a story about how it was meant to be. Whilst in hospital, I received an email to complete a tech test for another role that I applied to and the deadline was nearing. But when I received the email, Doing a tech test wasn't my priority at the time. I was discharged on the Friday and completely forgot about the tech test and a couple of days go by and I remember that I've got this tech test in my email. I check my email and I realize that I've got four hours before the deadline for this tech test. I sent an email asking for an extension given my circumstances but I knew it was too much of a risk to leave the decision of whether I could get the extension in someone else's hands. So with the surgery wound still fresh on my body, I attempted to complete the tech test. Of course, this wasn't the company's fault. It was mine for letting it get this late before letting them know. I finished the task as well as I could and sent it off. And lo and behold, I find an email letting me know my extension has been granted. So I worked on it again and got it to a standard I'd be happy with and sent it off again. Time goes by and I'm still applying for other roles. And I apply for one particular role where I apply and I get rejected a minute later. I thought it was hilarious and I wanted to share it on social media and let everyone else know and just, you know, just have a laugh. But loads of people seem to feel sorry for me and sent me loads of warm messages though it was appreciated that wasn't what I was looking for I just wanted everyone else to laugh too I know I know most of you are thinking ATS ATS 
But the funny thing is that I applied on a platform, Otter.com, that doesn't have any ATS built in. And one of the responses on my LinkedIn post was from Otter.com, confirming that they don't have any ATS built in, which meant that someone saw my application as soon as I sent it off and said, mm -mm. Not this guy, we're declining him straight away. Then I'm invited to an assessment center for the role that I did the tech test for. It's a whole day on-site assessment center where you'll have a group assessment and a one-to-one -one interview where they'll also ask you your reasoning for how you went about the tech test. I prepare heavily for the interview. I've got a full question bank and answers curated to the role and the company. I look over the company values, the fundings they've received, learn about the niche that they're in, and get myself familiarized with all of their products. I listen to any podcast I can get my hands on involving the CEO and the founder to get a better understanding of the business, the vision they have, and the struggles that they faced. Lesson number four, don't be afraid to network and use what you can to gain an edge. Coincidentally, a couple of days later, the head of marketing at the same company tells me to apply for the same role through her colleague. Little does she know I've already been invited to the assessment center. I use the opportunity to connect with her and ask her some questions. Me and the hiring manager have already established a good connection via email because of the back and forths we had over my appendix bursting. And she tells me that the person I messaged on LinkedIn is her good friend, but more importantly, her boss. And she tells me her boss speaks well of me and that she would introduce us at the assessment center. Cha-ching, I've gained an advantage even before stepping into the assessment center and now this role is mine to lose. I know I say I'm extroverted, but reaching out to people is something that doesn't come easy to me. There's a voice in the back of my head that tells me not to bother people. I've come to realize that there are people out here brazenly messaging all type of folks and they're better off for it. So I learned that I need to get used to it and start reaching out to people also. On the assessment day, I get there at 8.45 and I'm wearing a blue suit and I am looking dapper if I say so myself. Lesson number five, present yourself in the best way possible. I assumed that as soon as I walked through those doors, I was getting assessed and group assessments don't start until late in the morning. So I decided to mingle. Me and some other candidates that I met that morning ended up talking to someone that actually worked at the company, let's call him John, for over half an hour. I asked about the role, what to expect. I asked about his role and I asked about the culture of the company and loads of other questions. Remember John. We then go through our group assessments and I think I do fairly okay. I was the one that was timekeeping, I made significant contributions, I thought I presented well and most importantly I made sure to get everyone involved. Now it's time for lunch and I end up seeing the hiring manager and she introduces me to the head of marketing. We have some pizza together and I get to speak to some other people as well. Now it's time for the one-to-one -one interviews. I get taken through some rather large doors and I get directed towards the table furthest away from the doors. As I'm approaching the table I can see the person interviewing me. It's John. We picked up right where we left off. It felt like more of a conversation than it did an interview. This time I was well prepared for the questions with well thought out answers and then we moved on to my decision making on the application I built as part of the tech test. They gathered us all together at the end of the day and they told us that they would go through the list of candidates that evening and we would get either a rejection or an offer extension within 48 hours. I got a call six hours later whilst I was half asleep on a coach that I got the job and I got the news an hour before the 7th of July, 2022. 363 days after I made my conviction. Over 100 applications and rejections later, and after the wildest roller coaster ride of my entire life, I can now say, I am a software engineer. I would not have been able to do this without the support of my wife, my parents, my family, my friends, my mentor, everyone at the bootcamp, everyone that I met on Twitter and on LinkedIn and even the Somalian tech community and all and everyone that gave me advice and guidance throughout. I would not have the drive that I have today if it wasn't for Anas Allah whose words will stay with me forever. Most importantly, most importantly, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, all praises to God without whom I wouldn't have been able to find myself in such an opportune position, without whom I wouldn't have come across all the people who I would have during my journey. Alhamdulillah, all praises to God. For those of you who are looking for a career change, trying to pivot into tech, just know that all you need is one lucky break. I'm rooting for you, keep grinding and keep going. This was Code of Muhammad. Oh, actually, no, it's not. This is Muhammad, and I'll see you guys in the next one, inshallah. Show.